This was my number one most anticipated movie of the year, and I'm so hyped to bring to you Movie Review Monday, Halloween 2018. This movie was directed by David Gordon Green, and for the full writing and cast and crew credits, I've left a link in the description box below. Laurie Strode comes to her final confrontation with Michael Myers, the masked figure who has haunted her since she narrowly escaped his killing spree on Halloween night four decades ago. First of all, I love Halloween, and I love Jamie Lee Curtis, so I was excited to see this movie. Normally, I pass on movies when they're first out in the theater because of the crowds, which, by the way, dude sitting next to me, brush your teeth first next time. Anyway, before going to see this film, I was thankful I had watched another movie reviewer as he explained the timeline. So I'll save you a little confusion here. Basically, the timeline is that Halloween picks up where Halloween 2 ended, but 40 years later. So if you go in with that mindset or knowledge, I know it made it better for me. Otherwise, it would have made a little less sense, but I think it's still as good regardless. So right in the beginning, there's two journalists visiting Michael in his hospital that he's been contained to for 40 years. And one thing that really bothered me about the journalist's visit to the hospital was the fact that they were essentially allowed to sort of bait him into a reaction by showing him his mask, which he gives no reaction to. But the other patients seem to go ballistic, sort of as if the mask gives off this energy. That would be unacceptable. They're baiting a patient that hasn't given them any issues for 40 years and the doctor seems to want them to bait him, as Michael has never said a word and he's about to be transferred, so the doctor seems sort of desperate to get a reaction out of him. But I won't spoil the movie too much for you. I will say that there's a scene where Michael is in Lori's house, which she has spent her life making into sort of a booby trap specifically for Michael in case he ever got out. Now, there's a scene where she was going room by room checking for him, and as she cleared each room, she had a cell-like door that would like seal the room shut, so there would be no hiding or confusion as to exactly where he was. So as she's going room to room here, in the theater you could have heard a pin drop. It was dead silent. It was almost as if you could hear a collective heavy breathing coming from the viewers. And that was great. And it's something you just cannot get if you watch it at home when it comes out later. But I think Halloween lovers will still love the movie, regardless. Um, I will also say that I definitely think this movie will have at least one sequel and possibly, possibly could completely revive the franchise. Um, I loved this movie. I would go and see it at the theater again just to see how the people around were reacting. Funny thing here is, on our way home from the movie theater, we realized we live in an eerily similar area that looks just like Haddonfield, especially at night. I'm going to insert some Street View Google shots of our downtown here. And if anyone from my town is listening, could you turn on a porch light at night, please? It's creeping a bit. I hope you guys like this review. Let me know in the comments section if you watch it and what you thought. And if you have any recommendations, leave those as well. I hope to see you all tomorrow night for Taco Tuesday at 8 p.m and all month long at 8 for 31 days of Halloween. See you next time.